Okay, here we are. Uh, last week I mentioned that I was going to do a video on an auction coming up because I've had actually had a couple of inquiries about it since we started the inquiry uh, up again um, on an auction that's taking place out in California. And it's called, uh, uh, here it is, hold on a second, Alden's Auctions. Um, here they are. The sale is scheduled for April 23rd at 10.30 in Los Angeles. Stay away from this auction. That's all I can, this is, again, my opinion on what the stuff is. It looks like it's all copies, fakes, and reproductions. And this particular company um, has taken to the, uh, the old thing that we've seen with other auction houses using um, reproduced labels and, and stickers uh, attesting to, you know, being uh, purchased from, from um, uh, uh, major dealers, uh, well-known companies like uh, uh, Bluets and so forth. And I'm going to go through some of the receipts to show you what's wrong with them, um, uh, which are rather glaring if you bother to read them and uh, a couple of other things. And they've done this before. Um, a while ago, they did a sale, and I actually talked to um, Samuel Marchant about it because uh, they had several pieces in here with Marchant labels, which are obviously fakes. Here's one uh, with two Marchant labels on it and a Chin Lung mark in this ruby ground, uh, Famille Rose decorated uh, vase. Uh, this is a, a complete fake. Um, and they pushed it through with an estimate of $800 to $1,500, which, of course, is ridiculously low for something this rare. And um, uh, if it were authentic as a reproduction, it brought a very good price for $1,100. And they had another example of a mallet-type uh, vase here, um, which I don't think actually even sold. And, of course, if it was, it was one, it would be Kung Shi. It would be extremely rare and so forth. And this also was never sold by Bluets. Um, they, they're rather adamant that they never sold it, and um, um, uh, this was a, just a pure case of misrepresentation because there's this, this idea out here that there's something they can do about it. Well, there really isn't, uh, not without incurring enormous expense and bringing them to court, and then they're just going to say, well, that was the stickers that were on there, and we just said according to the stickers, and they'll dance their way around the uh, authenticity aspect. Um, uh, it says here, uh, let's see, any condition report, so forth. Um, and then they gave some, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, other examples, comps and so forth, all the usual nonsense. Uh, but if this were sold by Marchance, it would be a major selling point of it, which they barely mentioned. They just show the labels and let you make you draw your own conclusions, apparently. Uh, but the, the sale coming up isn't any better. Um, uh, here are the items, including an iron, an electric iron in porcelain and some other pieces uh, that they, they, they claim are uh, uh, rare and, and so forth. Um, it, for example, you have this uh, Ling Bai uh, Celadon affair here, Ling Shi, um, from a private California collector. Um, uh, and then they go on, um, bought it, purchased from Roswell Auctions down in Georgia, which struck me as being funny because Roswell's is another company that sells um, nearly only fake. They sell only fakes and copies from what we've seen. We've never seen anything authentic from the Chinese war art market go through there. And uh, they're actually trying to provenance it back to that. But you have other examples like this. And uh, one of them, they have included these, uh, these rather burnt looking uh, papers to go with them. And all of, the, all of the paperwork that they've provided to verify what these pieces are, all have this same sort of burnt tone to them. Um, even though this is only from 1974, it looks like it's been, an, it looks like it's 100 years old. The problem is, is that Gallery Gita was a legitimate company I, I, um, um, in India. Yeah, but they specialized in, they didn't sell Chinese art. They sold Hindu art by known contemporary artists. This was a fairly contemporary art gallery um, in India um, in, in the Intercontinental Hotel located in Delhi. And uh, they didn't sell these things. And the pieces themselves are just uh, ridiculous. Uh, here you have, they, they've taken a photograph of it on a table with a bunch of objects. This is clearly a Photoshopped image. Um, uh, using some French furniture. It looks like it was shot probably in their gallery, and then they tried to make it look like an old photograph. Here's the object, uh, a blatant copy with a Chen Lung mark on the bottom. Um, um, has that sort of rosy amber uh, coating that they put on cloisonné copies today to make it look older, and so forth. This is a reproduction. And uh, then over to uh, this. This is a rather staggering reproduction of an uh, iron red decorated Mei Ping vase, supposedly from the Ming Dynasty, I guess, is what they're, they're hoping. You'll think there's the bottom of it. Those of you who've seen the bases of these authentic examples, um, 
they don't even look remotely like that. Um, and this is this is the side of the vase. Now, what's interesting is that they, they got a label here. They got a sticker, a paperwork here from Blewett and Sons claiming it was bought at Blewett's in December 20th, 1990. All right. And the problem is, is if you've ever seen a real Blewett's uh, sales receipt, they have lots of information and they always date the pieces. Um, this piece has absolutely no date. Um, they're not dating it in any way. Well, Blewitts didn't work that way. Blewitts sold authentic stuff. They authenticated everything they owned. They generally provided provenances below the below the uh, below the uh, description. And here it says continued. Well, continued from what? Um, I didn't see any other receipts in here from uh, uh, 1990, um, but they've got continued here, but no date. So if you don't see a date on it, you know it's a fake. And also the paper has the same staining that the. Uh, other stuff had okay i mean that's just uh, that the other receipts have uh that's just that's just a ridiculous situation and then you have this um this this was a supposedly bought from william clayton limited william clayton was a very legitimate dealer of asian art he specialized in jades he was extremely knowledgeable and so forth uh dated from uh, 1964 and uh, here you have the the bowl, um, and they're dating it to the 15th middle of 15th century period. They're not saying what the mark says. They don't even try. Okay, that's not that's not what William Clayton would do. They were like Bluets. They gave very accurate descriptions. They would say mark and of the period. And down here they mention it is the the Joan de Mark um, uh, and so forth. But uh, the receipt doesn't even mention it. And um, this is the uh, they claim is the original um, uh, paperwork to it. The mark, this bowl, of course, if it was if it was authentic, would be worth somewhere in the million dollar range. Uh, but here they've got it with a twenty five hundred to four thousand dollar estimate, even though he he paid allegedly three hundred and fifty pounds for it in nineteen sixty four, which it wouldn't even in nineteen sixty four this bowl would have cost thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars. All right, and then you have another one supposedly from William Clayton uh, is this um, Kieran uh, banana leaf jar uh, that's done in the transitional style. And I think they're just trying to make this out to be night, end of the 19th century period. And that's not how they would write them. They would say Qing dynasty, 19th century, um, and so forth. And they would have never, uh, William Clayton would have certainly known that this was from the, from the transitional period, even then in the 1960s when the stuff wasn't that well known or that well studied, uh, of course, uh, because the Butler collection was just getting built. But here, here's uh, one of these. Um, the decoration is weak. The little, the grasses, the way they're drawn are very poorly done and so forth. So this is a brand new jar, in my opinion. And um, it's, you know, it's going to open at $100. So far, it has no bids, which is a good sign. It means people are catching on to them. And then you have this, uh, another piece from supposedly from William Clayton, um, a seal, which is blatantly uh, 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 brand new with a wooden box. And they filled it out, and they're just calling it 19th century in perfect condition. It's not 19th century. It's brand new. And then this is the biggest problem. One of the real, they really, they really messed up on the label. It's a it's a, a Ming vase, um, but notice the date on the receipt, December fourth, nineteen ninety three. The problem with that is is that Blewett and Sons went out of business in the first half of nineteen ninety two, and they stopped. They weren't selling anything. Store was closed. They were done. Um, and um, <clears throat> here you have. Uh, um, um, they just mentioned ins inscription of Da Ming Wan Li Nian Chi on mouth. Um, they wouldn't have said that. They would have said, and Mark and of the period uh, at the time. And allegedly they paid 12,000 pounds for it in 1993. Um, and now it's, they're, they're hoping to get four to six thousand dollars, which is, it means it, it lost about 70% of its value because the pound back then was, was about a buck and a half, two bucks to the dollar. Um, <laughs> so it was it sold for around twenty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars then. Uh, so anyway, this is a fake. Somebody has actually put a bid on it. If it's one of you, retract the bid. Save yourself a lot of heartache. And uh, here's another one dated from 1993. Is this white porcelain vase um, with the tube handles on the neck and so forth? Uh, they call it a Chen Bai uh, glazed interlocking lotus pierce handle vase. Um, again with the, um, the, the erroneous uh, 1993 Blewett and Son label. Um, and um, uh, let's see, decorated 
in a lush interlocking lotus scroll, two straight ears. They don't, they don't even identify what it is, and they don't date it. All right, again, that's not something Bluets would do. So anyway, that's, that's all I have to really say about this. It's an auction worth avoiding. Uh, don't get yourself in trouble over here. Don't talk yourself into it. Um, uh, uh, a couple of the pieces look pretty convincing, but I, I don't believe that they're authentic for a minute. And um, I, would, I would just avoid the entire auction. Um, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, if they don't do well, maybe the guy will get the message that it's, 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 it's not okay to, you know, push out fake archaic bronzes and sh Shang type bronzes and all this nonsense that they keep trying to sell. So anyway, that's all I have to say on it. I wanted to get it out there. Alden auctions um, uh, coming up in a, in, a, in, a, in a week or so on, on April 23rd in California. Uh, it is an auction of fakes. And that's all there is to say to it. Um, and don't fall for these old receipts and stickers and all this other nonsense. Um, with, 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 you know, with Photoshop, you can make anything today. Um, and um, they, they, they are happy to do it um, in a number of auction houses, and this is one of them. So um, avoid the sale. All right. Have a good week, and uh, thanks for watching. All right. Be back later. Bye-bye.